Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn about color management in Blender. I'm going to talk about some misconceptions regarding Filmic. I'm going to talk about which image formats in Blender have color management baked in and which image formats ha are more flexible. And finally, I will share my recommendations for managing your color workflow if you have to share your renders between different software or with different artists or departments or when you're using an external render farm like Blender Grid. Hey, what's up? This is Richard from BlenderGrid.com and let's dive straight into Blender where I have this barbershop scene made by the Blender Studio. And this is a scene with, it has a lot going on and there's a lot of interesting lighting with a lot of highlights. So I wanted to use this as an example for our color management. Um, let's actually close that. And when I talk about color management in Blender, I'm only talking about the settings in this little panel here in the render tab under color management all the way at the bottom there. And especially this filmic setting as of today with Blender 4.0 being the stable Blender version, filmic is the default view transform that is set in Blender when you uh, when you don't touch anything, it's will, it will be set to filmic. In the past, it used to be standard, which is pretty much nothing. It doesn't do anything. Filmic applies some kind of effect that makes the render look a little bit more realistic, where highlights are desaturated and things are effects are applied that make it look more how film would respond to light. So that's the color management settings. Now, the misconceptions I was talking about are around how filmic is applied because if you render this these settings have no effect on your render these settings only affect how you display the render and how you save the file if you're saving it as a web format and this is way better explained in the blender documentation so let's take a look at the color management documentation of Blender in the official Blender manual. And this is actually the Blender documentation is something I barely look at. And I actually want to do it more because this is, is such amazing information right here. And in the past, I used to be more intimidated by this technical stuff, but it's actually really useful to take a look at this. And the first image we see here, this diagram is exact. This, this explains exactly what I was talking about. So the rendering and compositing, which happens right after your rendering, happens in linear space. And that filmic setting in the color management, that's that blue dot right here. So filmic, the filmic effect doesn't happen in rendering. It happens between when you are looking at your render in the image viewer or when you are saving your render as a final delivery file which is called web image or a movie file so that's your typical png jpeg bitmap or a movie file like mov mp4 but there are image formats like openexr and others that don't apply filmic and that is one misconception that there is about filmic and i know this because i get approached at blender grid by people that are confused by this and it's it is a confusing topic but people ask sometimes when they rely on a custom color management workflow so here you have, a, you have a bunch of view transforms available, but you can install other view transforms into Blender. And then your version of Blender has some custom view transform. And some people rely on this because another department needs this. Maybe there's a VFX department that needs the renders to be in a certain view transform. And so they rely on this, but then they want to use Blender Grid to render their files faster. And they asked me if we can install 
that same view transform on our servers. And sometimes we do that, but in a lot of cases, this is not necessary. And I'll explain how. So the answer lies in keeping your renders in linear space, because that's how you render, that's how you do compositing, because linear space works really well mathematically. And in a render engine, pretty much uses pure math to calculate the values of pixels to make it look realistic, to calculate how light bounces around. And compositing, it's also very useful to stay in the linear space. So there is a way to save your files, to export and to move between software or move between a render farm and your local computer in linear space, keeping that linear space and not having to rely on the filmic transform by using OpenEXR. And I've tried to export every, almost every file format that Blender has available. So if you look at this output setting in the file format, you have all these image formats available and then a bunch of movie formats. But I've tried most of these image formats and I actually have that open right here. So here you can see I have this whole list of image formats and I rendered out this. Let's actually first look at the render that I just did. So this is what the render looks like. And people might think that the, the filmic setting that you have over here is applied to the render. So if we change our view transform from filmic to standard, you can see the, the rendered image changes. So that means First of all, that the render is completely separate from your color management settings. You can change this and the render, the image updates. And what happens here is that we simply moved from our linear space, our rendered image to our display using and using this color management setting. And because this color management setting is not baked into the render, we can still change it and it updates instantly without having to re-render. So that's that's one. Then the second question is which file formats will have the color management settings baked in? And I try to answer that question by simply trying all the formats. So I tried uh, different formats and then for every format, I tried a bunch of different bit depths. So uh, in the case of opening XR, I tried 16 bit, 32 bit, and then I also tried three different view transforms. So I tried Filmic, Standard, and AGX, which is a new, AGX is a new one that's an improvement on Filmic. So let's look at bitmap. And I, when I just open this in the default Mac viewer, it looks like this. This is AGX, this is Filmic, and this is Standard. And as you can see, they are all a little bit different. And what that means is that the color management settings are, or the, the view transform is baked into this file. And that makes sense because it's a bitmap, which is a web type image. It's like a final delivery format. And here it's called web image. The next ones are Cineon and DPX, and I can't view them with the default Mac viewer. It doesn't display, but we can open them in Blender later if we want to see that. But I've done that before and Cineon and DPX both are seem to be linear and they don't have the filmic view transform baked in. So that means saving as AGX, filmic or standard doesn't matter. It's all the same. Same goes for HDR, which we can view. So let's open the HDR uh, image. This is AGX, this is filmic and this is standard and they look exactly the same, which makes sense because HDR is a linear format. It stays in linear space and it ignores those settings completely. It ignores these color management settings because HDR can be used as an intermediate format, can be imported back into Blender. And then when you, when you save the final image, then you will apply uh, your, your view transform because Filmic is something that you want to apply at the very end of the pipeline. So that's something. So let's look at the next one. JPEG is a typical web format. So as you can see, AGX, Filmic and Standard all look different, meaning the, 
they are baked into the image. Now, OpenEXR, that is uh, the most widely used linear format. And I recommend saving as OpenEXR. I'm, I recommend using this format if you are doing anything else with your image after rendering, especially if you're moving between different software because OpenEXR is supported by most software, especially image processing and compositing software. It's It all uh, supports OpenEXR, so that is my recommended format. Uh, but as you can see, Filmic, Standard, AGX, all look all the same, 32-bit as well. OpenEXR can be saved in Blender in 16-bit and 32-bit. And in most cases, 16-bit is more than enough to uh, do anything you need. Next up is PNG. And here they look different. So that is to be expected. PNG is typical for the web. Then we have PNG 16-bit, which is exactly the same. It's just more color. And 16-bit PNG has more color information. However, the highlights will still be clipped. And I can actually show you that in the compositor after this. So PNG, yeah, color is baked in. Targa as well, baked in. TIFF, same, same thing, baked in. TIFF 16-bit, same baked in. WebP is a typical web format. I actually didn't know that Blender supported WebP, but it can now output in WebP if you want, but it's also color management settings are baked in to this file. And that was the last one. All right. So like I said, I recommend using OpenEXR. So if you're using Blender Grid, most people are still using PNG. And if you really don't need to do anything else with your image after rendering, it's fine to use PNG. But if you rely on some specific filmic settings or view transform, I really recommend saving as OpenEXR because that has no color transform done to it. That's just the raw render. Then importing that back into Blender, you can easily import EXR files into the compositor or into, yeah, into the compositor as image sequences or as a single image. And then when you save it, it uses your color transform settings and you're, you still have the flexibility to change this uh, before the view transform happens, which is the recommended workflow. The only downside of EXR might be that the files are bigger. So if you look at the file size of these open EXR images, they are seven megabytes for the 16 bit and the 32 bit is more than double. It's almost three times as big, 20 megabytes. I actually don't know I would, I would imagine that 32-bit would be double the size, but maybe the, it has to do with the compression. So the 16-bit image, the 16-bit EXR is in most cases more than enough. And if you care about file size, I really recommend saving as 16-bit EXR. Compare that with the PNG, which is the standard format in Blender. That's 3.4 megabytes, the 8-bit. Some people like 16-bit, but then you're already at 9.5, which is bigger than the 16-bit open EXR. So 16-bit PNG, in my opinion, really doesn't make sense to save as because the open EXR has more color information. It doesn't clip the highlights and it's a smaller file size. However, open EXR has a whole bunch of settings. So let's look at those. Open EXR in the codec, uh, by default, it's set to zip, which is the same as you might recognize from zip files. A zip file is a way to compress other files, but internally OpenEXR can use the same zip compression to, to pretty much um, compress itself. And if you compress this with zip and then uncompress it, you will get back to the exact uh, same result as the original. So that means it's lossless. And so that is set as the default in Blender. However, there are other formats that can get you really small file sizes. And so I have saved, um, I've saved this same image as an open EXR in 16 bit, which is float half and 32 bit, which is float full in all the different codecs. 
And so let's look at that and let's look at the file sizes of that. So this is, this is just the EXR files. And we can look at them. Actually, some of them can't be displayed by my Mac, but the ones that can, they all look exactly the same. Only when you start pushing around the colors a lot with the compositor or with color correction, then you might see differences. But other than that, this is pretty, pretty similar. So let's sort by file size. And we can see that the, the ones that can't be opened by my Mac are the smallest and they are smaller than the PNG. So th these are 16 and 32 bit. They are both the same size. Actually, all four are the same size. And the codec that uh, was used for these is called DWAA and DWAB, which I have no idea what that means, but that's a form of compression that leads to very small files because looking back at the 8-bit PNGs, which is st the, that's the default image format in Blender, 8-bit PNG, which is why most people use it. The, they are 3.4 megabytes and the smallest EXRs, both 16 and 32 bit, strangely enough, are only 3.2 megabytes. So if file size is a concern, you still, you can still use EXR and you can just use this lossy format um, because they are the smallest. And then the the smallest one that my Mac can display is only 4.6 megabytes and it looks it's, it looks fine. So let's now jump into Blender. Let's say we have rendered this on a on an external render farm and we're gonna work with these images now. So let's start a new, I'm just gonna start, no, actually we can just jump into the compositor. So the compositor is currently set to the render layers. Uh, if we disconnect that, yeah, it will update. Yeah, so now we can compare it with the original. So that might be nice to do. So here we are in the compositor. We can still change our color management settings and it will instantly update because this is only our display. Like that. All right, let's get one of our 32-bit EXR files in. The standard EXR format in Blender is 32-bit zip. So let's take that one and get that into Blender. There we go. And actually we can look at this in, let's look at this in the image viewer first, if I can find it. There we go. And as you can see, uh, it looks exactly the same as the render. However, if I now change uh, my color management settings, it's set to standard. If I change to AGX, you don't see anything. You don't see any difference. So you might think that you lost the ability to use Filmic if you render on a render farm in the EXR format, but that's not the case because you can jump into the image properties here and you can, you have this checkbox view as render and that applies the color management, but only to the view. So when we look back at this image, uh, this is the, the monitor or uh, projector we're looking at. So we're looking at our monitor and this little checkbox allows us to use the color management settings, but only for our display, for our monitor. And now we can change from Filmic to AGX and back to standard, and now it updates. So that's how you can get back to uh, to that same result as if you just rendered it. If you want to save this EXR, you don't want to do any compositing. You just want to save it with a certain color management. You can do that by going to image, save as, and here you can save as, you can see this uh, checkbox save as render, which means it will apply the color management settings over here because the the checkbox view as render only applies to the view and it doesn't do anything to your saved file. So let's say I want to save this as a PNG. Now I have to save as a render and then I can either simply follow my scene, which is this, or I can override it with the settings over here and I can use a different view if you want that. So that's the way you can render on Blender Grid 
get your EXR file into back into Blender and maybe you have some weird exotic view transform installed in your version of Blender that we don't have, then you can just import it and save it as a PNG or a JPEG and save as render. And then you can use that color management over here. So that's how you do that. If you, there's a, the other way is to use the compositor. If you use the compositor, you don't have to do any of that because the compositor, the compositor by default uses this color management. And he, right here, we're looking at the composite image because you can see it updates. So when we plug that in, you can see uh, when we change this, it updates. And when we, now we are plugged into our original render. We, when we plug in our 32-bit zip EXR, we get exactly the same result. And we can still update our view transform. So that is another way you can get back to that original result. And this is exactly the same because this is both linear color space and the 32-bit zip EXR file has all the data that the render also has. Um, we can actually more scientifically look at the difference, if that's interesting, by using a mix, a color mix node. And we can set this to difference and plug them both in. And if the image is black, it means there's no difference. And we can sample the pixels with this little tool. And you can see red, green, and blue, all zero. So our 32-bit zip EXR is exactly the same as our render, but that's a big file. Let's import some other flavors of our EXRs. So let's try the, the smallest one, the 32-bit uh, DWAB codec and uh, we can plug this into our viewer and it looks absolutely fine. And this, remember, this EXR file is smaller than the smallest PNG file and we can plug it in and we can change our view transform and everything looks great. Now let's compare that with importing our default PNG which is a PNG 8-bit. And actually we have three different ones because in the PNG, the Filmic or the AGX was baked into the file. And we can see that by, let's, let's try the Filmic one. If we look at this, currently the view transform is set to standard, which is kind of like doing nothing, but our image looks like it's Filmic. And it's, that's because Filmic is baked in. So if we now set this to Filmic, because you might have some other stuff going on that you want to apply Filmic to. We apply the Filmic transform twice and that looks really washed out and it looks really bad. But um, if we set this to standard, it's like we're viewing this with a single Filmic transform because the Filmic is baked into this PNG file. So let's try the other PNG file, the standard one. That's kind of the vanilla uh, PNG file. I'm just going to remove the, the Filmic one keep things a bit organized. So this PNG file looks fine. Let's compare that with the smaller file size EXR file. And they look identical if you don't do anything with it. But let's say we try and apply the AGX and we compare now. As you can see, you can you can see in the highlights, the PNG file is losing some of those highlights if we apply a view transform. So that, that information is lost in the PNG. And to make this even more clear, we can go back to standard where they look both the same. So you might think it's fine. However, if we do some simple color correction like exposure, we just wanna lower the exposure a little bit and let's start with the EXR file. I'm just gonna lower the exposure maybe, let's do two stops, that's uh, minus two stops. So we make the image a little bit darker, but you can see those highlights still look good. However, if we do this with the PNG, it looks completely terrible. The highlights are completely gone and it looks really bad. So that is another reason why I recommend using 
EXR files. If you even do some minor color correction, it already makes a difference. And again, this, this EXR file that, that has all the highlights is smaller than the PNG. Now let, let's look at the difference between the big 20 megabytes, oh, this is the original render, which is similar to the, identical to the 32-bit zip EXR. Let's look at that big 20 megabyte file and the smallest EXR file. And if you look through the difference um, node, you can see there are differences, but they are pretty small and they only apply in the highlights. So the difference are slightly over 0.1 in the highlights, but in the rest of the image, it's very minimal. And let's compare that with the difference between the original render. Actually, let's compare it with the original render, just um, which is the, which is the same thing. So if you save as a W uh, DWAB EXR, you were going to lose a little bit, but you're going to save a lot of file size. You're going to save a lot of disk space this way. Let's compare it with uh, the PNG. And here you can see this is what you're losing with the PNG. So that is that is crazy. So I, I would really recommend you use Open EXR and then set it to um, something like this. You can test all of this yourself with your own render to see the, the difference in file size in your own uh, your scene, your resolution, to see what the difference is and what you can get away with. But um, this is what you're losing if you save as PNG. And uh, this is a an EXR file that's smaller. You're barely losing anything. And if you lower the exposure on this, you're still getting all your highlights. Whereas with the PNG, you're losing all of that. All right, so that is file formats um, and how Filmic is applied. I actually wanted to briefly mention another article that we did. Uh, actually, Mike did this, uh, where he talks about the difference between Filmic and Standard. And at the time, I think AGX wasn't a thing yet, so he was talking about how Filmic makes your render look really good. But if you're if you're using Filmic, Filmic is applied to everything at the end, as we can see here. Um, you got your rendering and compositing and then Filmic is applied. And that is a problem if you are importing um, if you're importing footage into your compositor. So that is something we, we covered. So we already talked about color management before, but uh, what Mike did is he made a node that applies Filmic to your render. And then you can apply it only to your render in an isolated way and not to your background footage in this case. So in this case, the, the background footage looks good, the render looks good, and um, yeah, you can download that here. All right, there was one more thing I wanted to cover. So AGX, uh, the Blender documentation talks about this actually. AGX is the new uh, recommended way. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Yeah, so AGX improves on Filmic and uh, I think right now Filmic is still the default in Blender, but AGX, even in this scene, which this barbershop scene was made when the default was still standard, I believe. So um, let's go back to the original render. And if we compare Filmic with AGX, let's get our full image. This is Filmic and this is AGX. AGX seems to have a bit more contrast, especially in the darker tones, and the highlights look similar. So it has more contrast in this scene. Maybe in other scenes it has a different effect, but um, right here they recommend AGX over Filmic. So that's something you want, might want to look into uh, for your own renders. And yeah, that was all I wanted to cover. I hope that was useful. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. 
thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.